Hello everyone and welcome to EduSearch Clinics. We are towards the end of our entire discussion on descriptive statistics. In last around 12 videos, we have completed the entire topic with a lot of concepts and very little of calculations. Today we are going to see skewness. What is left skewed? What is right skewed? What is negative skew? What are box plots and how do box plots give you an idea that the data is skewed or not skewed and what are the outliers and what are its purposes. So we have already discussed the DCOVA framework. You please see the previous videos if you have missed out on this. We have seen the box plot and the five point summary. We have already seen this example on normal distribution where mean is equal to median is equal to mode. So this is a distribution that you already know but understand that there are other types of distribution. And when we will see further on probability and probability distribution and so on and so forth, these are the concepts that are going to be very helpful. So understand these concepts very nicely. When we go from normal distribution to a graph or a distribution that looks like this new graph on your screen, if you draw a curve, you can see that this curve has a long tail, okay? The word used is tail here, like this animal. So the tail is on the left side of the animal, right? So this is a tail of the curve, which is on the left side. If you draw a box plot of these values, you will see that even the box plot has a tail on the left side, okay? So this conceptual understanding is very important and this will make your exam answers as well as identification of left and right skewed, the concepts very easy, okay? So when the animal tail is on the left side, the box plot will also have a longer arm on the left side. And that is where mean is less than median is less than mode. Now from the graph, you can easily understand that the median is towards the right, okay? But the mean of this data is going to be towards the left. So left skewed data, this is basically an asymmetric distribution and this is left skewed distribution, okay? Understand if you want a mnemonic, then it's easy. The tail is on the left, the mean is on the left, the data is skewed to the left. So left, left, left tail on the left side, the mean is on the left, so mean is less than median basically, and the data is skewed towards the left. Left is always negative, so negative skewed. So this is how you can remember this part. Now going on the other side, okay, a reverse graph of this, the animals looking on the other side, the tail is towards the right. If you see the box plot of this, the right-sided tail is going to be longer. And what this means is that the mean is greater than median. So mean is also towards the right, okay? Because median is on the left side, mean is on the right side of an equation, okay? So mean less than median, mean is on the left side, the data is left skewed. This asymmetric curve, the data is right skewed, okay? So remember tail on the right, mean on the right, that means that median is less than mean, okay? And the data is right skewed or positively skewed, also known as right tailed, okay? This gives you around 10 to 20 multiple choice questions that are commonly asked. Remember this slide, memorize this slide, because different data distributions are very commonly asked. Understand the concept, left tail, left skew, mean is on the left, that means that the mean is less than median. The reverse applies for right side. Coming to a term known as kurtosis, again a parameter of data distribution. If you have a normal distribution, it is normal kurtosis, okay? If the kurtosis value is negative, the data is flat, and if it is positive, the data is peaked. A term that is used, calculation is beyond the scope of this series, it is not asked in exams, but understand that in a normal distribution, the kurtosis is normal, 
If it is negative, the data is flat. If it is positive but peaked, the data has a peaked distribution. Now coming to Z-score, we have seen Z-score in the previous video, but we have not seen how to calculate and interpret it. Z-score is basically the distance of a particular value from mean. So understand that variance and SD are generic. Okay, They apply to each value and come to a result. Whereas Z-score can be calculated for each value in the data separately. And it is X minus mean upon standard deviation. We have already seen that outliers are values with Z-score which is less than minus 3 or greater than plus 3. So that is what Z-score means. So if we see our example or the calculation that we did in the previous video and if you calculate the z score for each value in store a and store b say 100 120 130 145 90 110 170 300 if you calculate z scores of each value of store a and store b you will see that there are smaller Z scores for store A versus higher Z scores for store B. What that means is that there is more clustering and less distance in store A when compared to store B. So even using Z scores, you can identify if this data has fluctuation. Some important points in data distribution, a distribution of this time is a flat distribution and here mean is equal to median and a flat data distribution does not have a mode, okay? So this is important to remember that a flat data distribution has no mode and mean is equal to median. Coming to some other points, we have already seen variance is a squared value, so it will never be negative and because variance is not negative, standard deviation can never be negative. So if your calculation is showing a negative value, there is an error. SD always has a unit. So standard deviation has a unit. That is what we have already discussed. The greater the dispersion of data, the greater will be values of variance, SD and range. This is an important point. Z scores may also be higher. Greater the dispersion, greater will be the value of variance, standard deviation and range. We have not discussed population statistics so far, but if you use the same formulas of population that we have given to you, there is an empirical rule, okay? And this rule will be used in upcoming topics, but understand that using variance and SD only the empirical rule is discussed, okay? Many times you have not discussed the empirical rule as a part of descriptive statistics. Though you know terms like Six Sigma, right? What is Six Sigma? We have seen that lowercase Sigma is a measure of population variance. So when you are looking at population standard deviation, okay, or population variance, which is Sigma square and standard deviation, Six Sigma is also standard deviation, okay? So for population data with normal distribution, 68% of the values will cluster around the mean when you do a give or take that we saw in the concept example, mean plus or minus one standard deviation, okay? So what is six sigma? It is six into standard deviation, right? So mean plus or minus one standard deviation, 68% of the data, if it is normal distribution population data very important to remember 95 percent is in between mean plus or minus two into standard deviation mean plus or minus two sigma okay values beyond this are potential outliers okay we are discussing the empirical rule here because it is the best example of where variance and standard deviation is used Six Sigma is something that you would have heard. It's a course. There are belts on Six Sigma certification. It basically means standard deviation. Okay. And if you go into three Sigma, mu plus or minus three Sigma, 99.7% of the data approximately falls within mu plus or minus three Sigma. And if a value falls outside this data, 
then it is certainly an outlier. Okay. So that is the empirical rule. Now you can go beyond four sigma, five sigma, six sigma. Okay. So that is what six sigma is. For population data, normal distribution, empirical rule, very commonly asked question, okay? So again, a practical example of where variance and SD are used is empirical rule, right? So with that, we come to an end of our entire discussion on descriptive statistics. And from henceforth, we are going to discuss probability and probability distributions and then go into hypothesis testing. Thank you.